Well, it's a very warm welcome back to you all my beloved YouTubers and thank you all once more for returning to my classic dirt bike TV channel. Now, I hope you're all staying safe from the dreaded COVID-19 virus that's currently running riot on our planet at this time. And I know that many of you are on lockdown and unable to take your bikes racing. So I hope I can keep up your interest in these old dirt bikes by posting videos of all the types of machines we know and love. So I hope you'll stay with me for the next few minutes as we check out Mark Whittam's 1973-250 CZ. Now this is Mark's uh, very nice 1973-250 CZ that I spotted at the Cumberland Grand National in 2018. Now it's a very good example of one of these 1973 machines, although as you would expect it's not a fully original uh, machine from that year because very few of these CZ bikes are still in original condition in this modern day. There are so many uh, upgrade parts that you can buy for these bikes nowadays and some other examples have so many modern upgrades on them and special parts that uh, they've become a whole different make and model of bike altogether. But thankfully Mark hasn't made too many changes to his machine and it uh, still retains the look of a 1973 bike from that uh, particular year. But uh, back in the day and more specifically the early 1970s riders who owned these CZs were dedicated to this Czechoslovakian brand largely because of their reputation for being indestructible. Now these 250 CZ engines had a single cylinder two stroke piston port induction uh, motor. Now these engines normally had a dry clutch which had uh, three friction plates that uh, are normally made of alloyed steel and were coated with a special type of porcelain. But these clutches were very strong and capable of transmitting many times the torque they were subjected to and uh, other riders would convert these to a wet oil bath clutch although I've uh, heard instances where riders have tried it and then uh, returned back to the original dry clutch. Now Mark, uh, not unlike many other riders, has ditched the old uh, Jikov carburetor for a more modern Makuni. Now the old Jikov carb had a reputation for flooding and leaks and many riders who bought these bikes for the very first time immediately dumped the Jikov carbs for a better made uh, Makuni or other carburetor. Now these CZ front forks were good units for their time and coped well enough in almost all but uh, really bumpy tracks and uh, as I recall you had about uh, six and a half inches of travel at the front end but they still did their job with enough damping uh, without being too soft. Of course if you wanted to improve them you could still try different weights of oil or even experiment with stiffer springs if you wanted to toughen up that front end. But overall the front suspension system uh, was a pretty decent package for 1973. Now it's a standard 1973 alloy fuel tank on Mark's machine with that uh, rather old-fashioned looking leather retaining strap to hold the tank onto the frame. Although when you stop to think about it, it's uh, maybe not such a bad idea because if you were in a race situation and you needed to swap the tank quickly, uh, no silly bolts to undo. You just release the strap from its buckle, undo the two fuel pipes and the tanks removed. So it maybe looked like the idea was conceived and designed in an instant on the back of a cigarette packet, but it still worked extremely well. 
Now I've never seen an old CZ yet that still has its own original exhaust system fitted and uh, Mark's bike is no different from the rest in that respect. Now these low slung exhausts were forever being damaged by stones etc and uh, Mark has changed his for this nice upgraded expansion chamber from Holland. But these expansion chambers are a popular upgrade on many of these uh, CZs and you virtually never ever see an original exhaust system on these uh, CZ bikes especially uh, from uh, the 1970s. There's a quite substantial heavy duty alloy uh, back brake anchor on Mark's machine. Now this uh, looks like it would do the job well enough and it also has that uh, built in chain guide roller at the bottom uh, which should keep that big heavy duty uh, Unigear 520 chain tracking straight and true. As you would expect, uh, Mark has swapped the old original shocks for a pair of these classic Falcon shocks which are uh, very good quality and actually made here in Wareham in the UK. Now I actually had a pair of these Falcons on the back of my old uh, 1984-40 Michael and they worked a treat so uh, I've absolutely no hesitation at all uh, recommending uh, them for use on any of these uh, classic machines. Now one of the other very interesting facts about these uh, CZs was when they left the factory virtually every machine came complete with its own parts inventory uh, which included a replacement piston, rings, drive chain, con rod, gudgeon pin, coil and condenser and a set of spokes and other uh, nipples. Although back in the day many CZ dealerships would then place these parts in their spares department and resell them. Now as far as uh, comfort goes for the rider, these Czechoslovakian seats were a decent place to put your backside down on if you wanted to take a little breather while powering down the straightaway. Now many other old classic race bikes, especially from the 1970s, had seats that were like sitting on a brick but uh, these uh, Czech made uh, seats were among some of the best from that 1970s period. Now the handlebars and grips uh, etc on these uh, Czechoslovakian machines are about the first things to be changed on these bikes and uh, Mark has uh, fitted a pair of decent Renthal bars along with uh, new grips, uh, gasser and new levers. Now some of the other items that riders would change on these uh, CZs were the original plastics which uh, were uh, not that great and these were normally changed uh, pretty quickly. But these were all pretty common upgrades for most riders so it's not surprising that you very seldom see an original CZ on the racetrack these days. It's just that uh, nowadays there are so many better parts available for these bikes now and uh, all the upgrades make this bike a much better user-friendly experience. Although mind you the downside to all these uh, changing of original parts is that it can lower the value of the bike if you want to sell it on. But the CZ factory was always well known for producing reliable strong motors and uh, CZ were actually the first ever motorcycle manufacturer to use expansion chambers on their off-road motorcycles and it's said that many of CZ's innovations including these expansion chambers technology were copied by the Japanese and then of course exploited on their new motorcycles. 
But in terms of success on the track, these CZs were world beaters in their day and they won four 250 World Motocross Championships and three 500cc titles between 1964 and 1969. So I hope you've enjoyed this very brief look around Mark Whittam's very nice 1973-250 CZ. Uh, not an original bike from that year, but uh, as I mentioned earlier, very few of these machines still have their original parts in these modern times. So anyhow, please stay safe during these very difficult times and hopefully it won't be long before we're all back doing what we all love best, racing classic dirt bikes. This video was brought to you in association with VMX Magazine, your number one publication for classic, vintage and off-road motorcycles. Just visit their online website for more information.